Hey, hey, look who stopped by. Good to see you, man. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, where we like to talk about hot OTC and penny stocks that got the potential to make us some money. Now, just because they're hot, that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to run tomorrow or even this week. Some things need time to get to their full potential. So with that in mind, I think Spay Resources is a good company to look at. This is an up and coming mining company in Canada. They are listed on the Canadian Securities Exchange, ticker SPEY, and here in the US on the OTC markets, their ticker is SPEYF. Now I'll go into more details about this in a little bit, but they've got mines here in Canada and Argentina as well. And some of those mines do deal with silver, but their primary thrust, their primary push is into lithium. And why not, folks? It is an exploding market right now. I mean, we've had lithium in batteries for quite a while. We put them in our toys, we put them in our gadgets and devices, but then came the onset of COVID and everything changed. Now, I'm not saying COVID has anything to do with lithium, but curiously enough, it seems that the whole world at that time together got on the same page of ending the ice age. What I mean by that is getting rid of the internal combustible engine. They were going to electric vehicles all at the same time we thought this. I don't know why, but it is happening and lithium is rising in value right now. She hit her eyes in 2017, but in 2021, she went up almost 400% and it is still rising. And now we got businesses popping everywhere, making all kinds of electric vehicles that need electric batteries. We have uh, massive battery gigafactories popping up. We even have these energy storage systems that you can install at your house or your business. So lithium is going through the roof and it is a base substance in high quantities in the world. You just got to get it out. But that can be rather expensive, which is where this company is different. They have an extraction process completely different than anybody else with a company that has the technology to do this. And they look to be making a joint venture with that company as well. It's greener, saves water, saves time, and saves money. Everything everybody loves. We're going to jump on into the most recent financial disclosure first because this has a lot of information in it that we can build on. Now, we're not going to look at everything, but I do want to tag on to the financials and some of the history about how they got hold of these claims, the companies they bought them from. And that's important. It's what I want you to pay attention to. You're going to see these names of these companies pop up again. They have got relationships with the new CEO, Mr. Thomas of Spay. So I think this is going to be a leg up for the company. Now, this financial disclosure just came out a month ago, August 31st, and it covers a period of nine months. Looking at their financials, just tagging on to them, I want to look at their current assets. At the end of August, just a month ago, they were at $4.7 million total current assets. Nine months ago, they were at $3.9 million, so they have increased about 18%. Their liabilities have also increased huge, but it's still far beneath their assets at 1.4 million. So they are looking good. Now that's about all the financials I want to cover with you. So I want to tag on to some history here. Spay Resources was incorporated on July of 2017. In April of 2021, the company entered into a share purchase agreement with Tech One Lithium Resource. Subsequent to the transaction, Tech One obtained control of the company, which resulted in a reverse acquisition. And pardon my scrolling, but the next piece is way down here. I just zoomed by it. All right. This is how they acquired the properties in Argentina, which is where they're doing most of their hard labors right now. This is in regards to the Candela 2 project. It was March of 2021. Tech One entered into an option agreement with AIS Resources. The company has the option to acquire up to 100% interest in this mine, known as the Candela 2. Now, there's other pieces of property thereafter, too, from the same company. They are after the Poquitos 1 and Poquitos 2 from AI Resources, and they have the option to acquire 100% of them as well. Then, on March of 2022, the company entered into an assignment agreement with Recharge Resources to assign their rights to acquire 80% of Poquitos 1. 
This is different. This is P-A-C-I. This is P-O-C-I. So these are different pieces of property. So we have AI resources and recharge resources bringing three or four pieces of property to them right now. And is there anything else I got for you? I think there's one more all the way at the bottom right there. On September 28th, the company announced that it had entered into an agreement to acquire all the shares of Lithium Energy Metal Corporation, which gave them four projects in the James Bay region of Quebec. Now let's jump into some news starting from October 4th going forward. They have been doing a lot and it's going to explain a lot. We're going to take a look now at some news presses that have just come out here recently. We don't have to go too far back from October 4th forward. And each piece of news is really important and big. I would almost call them all material changes. They're building blocks. I think this company is getting ready to lift off. I see them doing a lot. Now, what I want to do first here is give you a bite-sized piece of information of what this company is all about so you can see it nice and easy. Spay Resources is a Canadian mineral exploration company which holds two option agreements to acquire 100% interest in the Cadella 2 and the Paquitos 2 lithium brine projects, as well as 20% interest in the Paquitos 1 lithium project, all of which are located in the Salta province in Argentina. Now, Spay also holds an option to acquire 100% interest in the Silver Basin Project, as well as 100% interest in the Caslo Silver Project, all in Canada, both in British Columbia. So they have these silver mines in Canada, and they've got the lithium mines over in Argentina. Matter of fact, where their mines are at, they call that area the Lithium Triangle. Not just this company, the world. They call it the Lithium Triangle. And here they tell us that the company is pleased to announce it has completed exploration activities and has hit multiple lithium brine aquifers in the Akusi Salar, the lithium triangle. We are pleased to report a planned five hole production drilling program in the coming months. Did you hear that? There's a huge mile between exploration and production, folks. One is looking, one is doing. One makes you money, the other one costs you money. So they're in a real nice place right now. This is where you want to find your mining companies, moving from looking to doing. Let's take a look at that first piece of news. This came out January 4th, uh, excuse me, October 4th. And they tell us here that Spay Resources announces appointment of lithium brine expert. Philip Thomas is chief executive officer. They're not blowing hot wind here, folks. He is an expert in his field. I'll try to shine a little light onto that for you. So they tell us here on October 4th that Spay Resources was pleased to announce that Philip Thomas joined Spay as CEO, the chief executive officer, effective October 3rd. Now, Mr. Thomas is a highly specialized lithium brine geologist with significant experience in Salt Lake Salar's exploration hydrology, estimation, and production chemical engineering. He has had more than 30 years experience in the capital markets as mining focused investment banker with Macquarie Bank and ABN AMRO. He knows how to look at a company and see if it has value. He's been working with the banks. Now here's the proof in the pudding. The man has been CEOs of other companies. In 2003, Mr. Thomas and his team at Admiralty Resources explored and built a lithium carbonate extraction process and a plant in Rincon Salar, Argentina, which was sold recently for $825 million. And in 2009, as the CEO of Lithia Inc., Mr. Thomas explored and produced a resource estimate for the Ponzulis Salar that was sold to Ganfang this year for $962 million. Folks, who else do you want at the helm of your ship? God almighty, this guy's had two companies already and he's got $1.8 billion worth of sales under his belt now for the last two lithium companies he was with. Isn't this the right man for the job? Mr. Thomas is also a shareholder and founder of EcoSolve, 
We're going to talk about Ecosolve because they're going to be the primary difference to how fast this company makes money and what puts them ahead of the other lithium mining companies. So Mr. Thomas is a shareholder and co-founder of Ecosolve, a direct lithium extraction technology, that is DLE, using solvent exchange that enables producers to extract lithium from high magnesium content brines with significantly higher recoveries and lower costs than most other technologies. Ecosolve Limited is currently developing a construction plan for a 20-ton lithium carbonate mini plant in partnership with Spay Resources, who has licensed the Ecosolve technology. Now, this is interesting. They tell us here it's a 20-ton lithium carbonate mini plant that they're talking about. Well, I'm going to show you another piece of news. I guess their dreams are getting bigger. They've kicked it up to a 100 ton. We'll get to that in just a second. But you see here that he is involved with Ecosolve. He is a co-founder and a shareholder. Remember those other companies we were talking about that they bought the properties from? I said, remember them? Well, this is why. These were pieces of information I just grabbed up so you could see what I was talking about. The top one here, not only is he the CEO right now of Spay, but he is also the CEO right now, the bottom one here, AIS Resources, which is one of the companies they have been getting properties from. Then there in the middle, Recharge Resources. Phil Thomas, he is QP and consulting geologist to Recharge. So you can see he's involved with all these companies. He's got to be an integral asset to the company. And as you're going to see with Ecosolve, there's more to be gotten here because they're thinking about doing a joint venture with them. And that would make all the difference in the world. The next piece of news we got here came out on October 7th. Spay Resources Corp. completes acquisition of Lithium Energy Metal Corporation. Now, we did touch on to this in their financial report. They got four pieces of property. They tell us here that Spay Resources has completed the acquisition of 100% of Lithium Energy Metal Corporation. LEM holds interest in four projects in the James Bay region of Quebec, near projects held by Patriot Battery Meadows, Inc. They're also on the OTC market. The projects vary in distance from PMT's projects, one of them being within approximately one kilometer of the border. Now, PMET is working with rock and not brine. And there's a lot of people, pros and cons, which is better, rock or brine? Well, brine has been expensive to work with and it hasn't been as efficient as working with rock. Not until now. Now, these are the four pieces of property. We're not going to go into them heavy, but you can see how big they are. They each have their own name. The 454 block has 10 continuous claims and covers 513 hecka acres, as does the Westlake Corvette project. 10 continuous claims, 513 hecka acres, but they get bigger. The Triez project consists of 50 claims covering 2,500 hecka acres, and the Solomon project has 100 claims and covers over 5,000 hecka acres. So they got a lot in that deal. Next piece of news came out October 26th. Spay Resources Corps announces intention to commence normal course issuer bid. You can kind of think of this as a share buyback. Spay Resources Core is pleased to announce that it intends to commence a normal course issuer bid under which it may purchase up to over 5 million of the company's common shares, representing approximately 5% of its issued and outstanding shares. The NCIB is expected to commence on or about November 2nd and to terminate November 2nd next year or earlier. All shares purchased under the NCIB will be purchased on the open market, right? So that's going to help. It's going to keep the volume up. All shares purchased under the NCIB will be canceled. That's going to make for a permanently smaller float, smaller outstanding share count. Oh, hold me back, Lucille. This is where it gets juicy, folks. This is coming out of the shadows and into the light. This is the knife cut. This is what sets them apart and different from all of the other lithium mining companies is this technology. And not just the technology, but the relationship that Mr. Thomas, the CEO of Spay, has with this company. And they are talking joint venture. I hope it's this piece of news that's in. So this came out October 28th. Spay Resources extracts 
99.5% pure lithium carbonate used in EcoSolve process from our flagship Candela 2 and Kahusi Salar project. Just let them tell it. <laughs> I'm gonna give them a chance to talk. Spay has acquired the first EcoSoft production license, which prioritizes the company to be the first client to commission EcoSoft to complete the construction proposal, preliminary and plant engineering and manufacturing of the plant at in Kahusi. The brines and the lithium carbonate that was produced are being assayed and inspected by an external laboratory to validate and corroborate the results achieved by the University of Melbourne and the Elksov team. They're pretty impressive folks. The brine was subjected to 10 phases of continuous processing that took approximately 22 seconds for the solvent to extract the lithium in each phase. The 10th phase had extracted 135 grams out of 145 grams, which was a 96.3% recovery rate. The purity of the lithium carbonate was set at 99.5% based on the sodium carbonate used to convert the chloride. EcoSolve is planning to build a 100 ton mini plant in Salta. See? And the company is in active discussions with EcoSolve Limited regarding a potential joint venture opportunity. And I read someplace else, I hope I got it someplace, they want to put EcoSolve on the market as its own entity. And I'm sure they would probably do that through the NASDAQ, but they didn't mention that. They just said they wanted to come onto the open market. So you've got this company who is the CEO and is part of EcoSolve who wants to joint venture, no, yeah, joint venture with our company. I mean, don't you see all of the synergistic power that could be created here? I am quite excited by this. Did I have anything else here to say? No, but I want you to understand this EcoSolve situation. This is the difference, folks, and I'm gonna keep it as easy as possible because it isn't very technical, to be honest. This is an article, Race of Technologies, No New Lithium Brine Projects Without Direct Extraction, DLE. Uh, they tell us here, experts agree that all available deposit types need to be developed, brine deposits, hard rock deposits, clay deposits. However, currently, brine deposits are being bought by large Chinese corporations for big money in Argentina, Chile, and the USA. But judging by declining share prices, these projects now seem to have a harder time with investors. While the pendulum of investors' favor is swinging toward hard rock projects, some of which have been performed like a dream, like Patriot Battery Metals, ticker PMET on the Canadian market. Uh, I'm not quite sure what, it may be PMETF, eh, maybe, on the American markets. The recurring arguments are that brine projects are mostly in South America, making them politically unsafe. Hard rock projects also exist in politically safe countries such as the US, Canada, or Australia. The second more important objection to brine projects is that they interfere with the delicate water balance because they're located in the desert. This makes the development of the conventional evaporation ponds difficult from an environmental point of view. In fact, lithium extraction from brine, if not using DLE, which is what EcoSolve uses, currently still requires the construction of large ponds and the use of large quantities of lithium brine, which destabilize the water table, take years to build and commission. At best, these methods recover only 55 to 70 percent. What were they getting? 96 percent percent of lithium contained in the brines resulting in the significant loss of this valuable resource. But from Australia comes a technology that seems particularly promising, EcoSolve. The process yields a lithium product of 99.5% purity, recovered in just one to two hours. In the process, 95% of the solvent is recovered and very little fresh water is even required. The university owns the license and EcoSolve Limited has the exclusive worldwide rights to license the technology to producers. EcoSolve Limited has signed two contracts and four pending and is soon to list the public company list the company public. <laughs> I was surprised to see it there. I got all tongue-tied. So see, I know my 
stuff. They are going public and our company is probably going to joint venture with them, which would have some effect on us in some way, I'm sure. But all of this is just exciting information, folks. You have a company here who has only made two contracts and didn't they say we were the sole? Uh, let's see. Yeah, Spay has acquired the first of EcoSolve's production licenses. So yeah, we got dibs, first mover advantage. Literally, we got first mover advantage and now we're supposed to do a joint venture with them. And it's just gonna get bigger because they wanna put it on the open market. And this company is gonna grow bigger because more lithium companies are gonna wanna do this, aren't they? If it's cheaper, more green, faster, easier, you don't have to build out those huge gigantic ponds for evaporation. That saves them about 12 to 18 months from getting this thing going, just that in itself. Not to mention the money it saves and the purity, the purity of the lithium that they're getting. Folks, this is very exciting, can you tell? I like where this company's going. There is still some time needed, but as you can see, they're moving fast. All that news came since October 4th, and we're just now leaving October. So I see this company moving into faster gears, and we'll probably start seeing some numbers. I don't know when. They'll probably tell us. It's not like they're shy of putting news presses out there. Let's go take a look at that chart and see what they've been doing, what they're looking like, and where we expect them to go. We're now going to take a look at SPEYF, Spay Resources. This is a one day, one year chart. Very interesting back here a year ago, something must have been going on. We had uh, four days of spiking from about 20 cents to 31, 32 cents. So you had yourself 50% pops day after day. Some big downs, some big runs up. She does have a lot of activity. And right now she is currently over her 200 day, one year chart. Let's take a look at our six month, four hour chart. Well, look at that, our high bubble is on this side of the chart at 29 cents, and we did have a low here of one cent, though it just hit it real quick and bounced right up. This run right here, crossing the 200, that was almost a 300% gain, and she has been holding this. I mean, she's been struggling, but she's been holding on to that 200-day SMA. She did have another 100% run right here, and she's giving it back right now. But look at all the volume that's coming to the picture right now. Our technicals do show she still is on a drop, probably going to hit and test that 200. Looking at our 20-day, one hour. So there's that nice run from a low of 14 cents up here to, well, that's over 100% run right there. She came down, she hit her 50, bounced off of that, got her high bubble off of that bounce, and then fell just as hard, came all the way down, tested the 200 here, has broke under it, and it looks like she's probably going to come back up like a rubber ball onto the surface of the water. Technical show, a slight recovery is occurring right now, but not a whole lot of activity. But we do have all that volume that's being paid attention to this company right now. There's your last five days. Boy, she has dropped from that 28 cents all the way down to 15 cents and is working her way back up. And that's what she does. She likes to roll up to that 30 cents, 28 cents. She comes down and back up. And it looks like she's on an up roll right now. On the five minute chart, it does look like things are pressing up. She's struggling. We're right at the 50 day SMA right now. She had a hard time with it once. She did break it and it looks like the 200 threw her back down. So we're gonna watch this cross up and see if she gets a jump off of that 50 day onto the 200. But we're not looking at this to run tomorrow or this week. I am expecting her to grow. I'm expecting this new technology to be being used very quickly. How soon is quickly? Well, I don't know, maybe a year. I honestly, honestly don't know. I would keep up with the news. But if you've got some money you could put aside for a long hold, if you're looking at a company that could be on the cusp of breakthrough technology when it comes to litho mining, and maybe they'll have some sort of connection with EcoSolve, you know, more than just a joint venture. And I would say keep an eye on EcoSolve. EcoSolve is what's making the difference for this company, and they have strong ties to it. And whatever EcoSolve does may or may not help this company, but it's darn sure going to help EcoSolve and all the other lithium miners that are going brine direction. And if they go public, who knows how big that could be? It's worth keeping your eye on. So I like Spay F. 
I like EcoSolve. I like what they're doing. I mean, if you're going to pull uh, lithium out of the earth, then let's at least process it as green as we possibly can. Remember, folks, there's more DD to do. I've just scraped the surface, but I like what I'm smelling and seeing. But you do your own DD. See if it meets up with your criteria. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks. Pa-da-pa-da-pa-pa-da-pa-da-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-p